love to think of my brain like a closet. I once completely nerded out with another woman in a mastermind over this analogy. We were just like, oh my gosh, yes, it's like a closet, right? The fact that we are curators, we like to be intentional about things, right? The company that we keep, the clothes in our closet, the items in our house. It is time to curate your thought closet. Welcome to Sincerely Future You, a podcast that helps ambitious women like you make decisions today with the future you in mind. You guys, we have such a fun episode for you. I love making every episode a good analogy. Like it's my favorite kind of episode. And today, if you have any interest in fashion, you're going to be taking a ride with me. Today, we are talking about up-leveling your brain, but thinking about your brain as if it's a closet. I've been getting really into my fashion lately and been feeling really inspired, and I think you are going to be inspired as well by the time we get to the end of this episode. All right, but before we do, we got to dive into our shout out of the week. Shout out is going to my client, Mindy. Mindy is a member of the Masterful CEO School, and she is a digital marketing strategist and consultant. You guys, she sold a product business and is now in the service world. But when she came to me, she really wanted to make sure that her time and money thoughts that were already pretty good weren't impacted by the many changes that were going on in our personal life. And in the beginning of the Masterful CEO School, we get crystal clear about your goals, right? There's no place to hide. And one week in the very beginning, first month, Mindy came paralyzed by indecision, wanting to make the right decision about buying a house for her and her family. And just like when we argue with a spouse about picking up their towel when it's not all about the towel, coaching is the same way. We were coaching on the decision to buy the house, but I could tell it wasn't about the house. She wanted the house. She just also wanted to feel comfort and certainty. And she was telling herself that those emotions were outside of her. Once she saw that she was outsourcing her decisions, she did the part that I actually can't do for you, which is why she is the shout out of the week. The part I can't do for you as your coach is to feel the discomfort in your body and make a decision. And then have your own back on that decision. Literally one day later after our coaching, she signed for the house and we moved right on to revenue decisions. And watching her almost hit her impossible goal month goals in month one for revenue, this is the power of moving quickly, my friends. These are advanced rooms and it's important to understand that your personal life, it's not separate. It all lives in your brain and you deserve to feel in control of your brain, not at the mercy of it. Rock on, Mindy. Your CEO energy is just burning bright. Which brings us to our hype sesh of the week. Are you ready to get hype before we get fashion? Let's do this. Your experience is 10% what's happening to you and 90% what you're telling yourself about what's happening. Hard things, they can feel hard or they can feel like a challenge. Change can feel scary, or it can feel exciting. But ultimately, babe, if you want something bad enough, the place you've got to start is taking the steering wheel of your brain. Brussels sprouts, they used to be trash, but they hired a coach and a PR team and rebranded themselves as the only nutrition delish option on the fanciest menus. Seriously, what happened there though, right? But whether you need a Brussels sprouts glow up or just a reminder of who the hell you is, today is your memo. You're the one with the pen. Are you writing the story of you as the heroine or as the victim? Or worse, because I don't think that we really all live in extremes. I think the most dangerous place to stay is in that average zone, right? Good is the enemy of great. It's so true. Are you writing some forgettable, safe novel about yourself? Maybe you're helping clients. Maybe you're selling products. But you're not inspired. 
this matters. And you don't have to change anything about your business to get there. You simply need to take that steering wheel. Start deciding who you are instead of figuring it out passively or observing who you are when your primitive brain is running the show. You are not your fearful thoughts. You are so much more powerful and complex. And it's time to come to, you know, those like movies where all of a sudden it's like a scary movie and you don't know whether the scene is a dream or not. And you're like, oh, this sucks. And then they wake up and they're like, oh, my gosh. And they're standing and they're like they were they were sleepwalking. That might be what you're doing, right? You are so much more powerful. You're going to come to notice that you're the one that's writing the story. Feel the pen in your hand. Stop printing and selling the chapters that don't feel aligned and then start telling a story that you'd be proud to show up in. Get a little cray. Okay, let's talk about your thought closet. I love to think of my brain like a closet. I once completely nerded out with another woman in a mastermind over this analogy. We were just like, oh my gosh, yes, it's like a closet, right? The fact that we are curators, that's an identity that I subscribe to, that I'm a curator in all the ways. We like to be intentional about things, right? The company that we keep, the clothes in our closet, the items in our house. For me, a few years ago, I took it even to the next level, and I instated a no pieces of paper in my car policy, right? No business cards, no receipts, no flyers, no ticket stubs, no gum wrappers. I don't want the clutter. And when I joined my first mastermind, I suddenly felt acutely aware that the value I felt most attached to for that investment was in having access to a whole new set of high-level thoughts of not only my coach, but the women around me, the women in that room, right? The women that were attracted to that room were some of the best coaches in the world. And I stand by that still to this day. It was like one of the wildest experiences that I've ever had. And knowing them has changed me from the inside out. Not because they have secret biz tips, although I do love a good strategy, but because the way that they thought blew my mind. I described it as being in the most epic sorority with a shared closet of all of the best designer thoughts, right? Designer thoughts. Their thoughts about money were like green silk camisoles. Their thoughts about themselves as CEOs felt like pinstriped, immaculately tailored pantsuits. Do you ever see that movie? What's that movie with uh, Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick where she like goes missing or whatever? Blake Lively's clothes in that movie, that's the type of suit I'm talking about. Their thoughts about time were like velvet blazers that made you both sit up straighter and yet also relax into it. Can you tell that I've been heavily influenced and inspired by my client Maggie, the style coach's body of work, by the way? It is time to curate your thought closet. And I have, of course, some strategy for how you can do this right away. We like to make these episodes actionable so that if you wanted to, you can take this episode and use it as a masterclass. Some of you guys do. I've seen reviews where, uh, or I've had people join into my uh, containers, into my coaching rooms that have said that they used these episodes as masterclasses for how to grow their business to the point where they can invest in the room. And that is really, really fun. So if you're not doing that, take take a note, right? Here is how you are going to do it. What do we got here? Let's say we have five steps for curating your thought closet. Number one, in style, we start with purging, but with our thoughts, it's actually hard to even know what thoughts are outdated until we have some perspective. So step one in curating your thought closet is not going to be to purge. It's actually to cast a vision of future you. Who is she? Pinterest is such a fun place to do this work in fashion. And maybe one day I'll create a Pinterest app for future you, right? Like how to curate yourself to the next level. Ooh, how fun. I'm going to table that idea for now maybe 2025. But for now, start putting down your inspiration somewhere. About five years ago, I wanted to feel glamorous. I didn't. 
but I wanted to, right? That was future me, was more glamorous. I wanted to think of myself as someone who was fit, like not just someone who was in a challenge group and like working out alongside other fit people, but someone who was a fit person, right? Even though I was doing the things, I didn't have that identity yet. I wanted it. Someone who was poised. I still felt very much like, oh, here, I'm here, I'm here. I felt like like this little puppy dog energy, right? I wanted to be poised. Someone who was wise. Someone who wasn't emotionally reactive, who is both elegant and unafraid to be barefoot and have sea salt hair, right? Like I had this very specific vision for future me and yours should be super specific because at the end of the day, no one person could completely inspire future you because you are uniquely you, right? So we can use inspiration from all different people, all different sources, right? Janelle Monet is like a big inspiration of mine. And then also is Brooke Castillo. And I think these people are so different in so many ways, but they both bring different essences and different parts of the person that I aspire to be, right? So I wanted to be someone who people trusted with their most precious truths, someone who is a safe haven haven for the vulnerable and someone who could light a fire under people who felt like their flame had gone out because that was me, right? Like I felt at that moment in time that my flame had gone out. I was divorced at 30. I felt like, oh, you know, it was uh, that that movie, uh, I'm... I'm just going to reference all the movies this episode. The um, 13 going on 30. It was like supposed to be 30 flirty and thriving. And I was like 30 divorced and just like fucked in every way. I was like, oh, great. Like this is not the vision that I had for myself. Right. So then I had to like live into this vision, cast it wherever you're at. Doesn't matter what you're looking around at, what your reality is. If you listen to last week's episode, Leah dropped that drops that nugget of wisdom from her mind that your your predicament does not determine your destiny. Yes, whatever your thought closet looks like right now, if it's all like bargain bin from Walmart, don't worry. We're going to upgrade you, right? So step one, you're going to cast that vision. For me, someone who is a little bit intimidating. That's some someone I wanted to be. Now, I feel like right now I have curated this closet. I've I feel in alignment with almost everything that I just told you at one point were visions for me. And now I'm doing another upgrade, right? I'm asking what is the essence of millionaire Jess? So step one is about getting the essence, casting the vision of who future you is. Like what's your style in general? Is it like bohemian chic or is it, you know, like, business play? What is it? Is it bold statement romantic? Like what is your general style of thinking? Number two, step number two is to ask yourself these two HQQs. All right. These are your high quality questions today. Number one, what does future me have to think to have these qualities that you talked about in step one? These are what kinds of clothing brands equate to the level of thoughts that you want to step into. So if you're saying right now your closet is made up of like TJ Maxx, you're a Maxinista, but you want to be at the next level where you're like, okay, I actually want to be at the, for me, it was like the last evolution of me. It was like, I just want to be at the Club Monaco level which isn't like the pillar of fashion. It was just the level that made me feel like, okay, I feel confident. I feel like a boss. I felt like good. And now I'm like, oh, millionaire me would not be caught dead in Club Monaco. (laughs) I'm like, millionaire me is like, oh no, here we go. Like I want like the, the underground designers that are just coming up. Like I, I'm not really big on designers in general in the fashion world, which is interesting. Um, but I am into fashion. I like these like small labels that are like ethical and, and crunchy, but also like, you know, producing small batch stuff where you're like, oh, I am 
someone who only has, there's only a couple of these made in the world, right? How fun. And I also love vintage, right? Okay. That's my fashion personality. But when it comes to your business, when it comes to yourself as a CEO, what kinds of clothing brands equate to the level of your thoughts? I want you to start thinking about this in a visual way. It's really important. And then your second high quality question is, what does future me have to stop believing? This is the purge, right? What clothes do you keep putting on that you feel absolutely blase about? What items are just sitting on the hangers or in the back of your drawers, taking up space and distracting you from the magic that's already in your closet? Okay, This is the work part. Step two, it's the dirty part. You can't skip it. I'm sorry. You may need to schedule it. You may want accountability for it, but this work will upgrade you. It will lighten your mental load and give you access to a brand of you that you only have ever window shopped, okay? All right, step three. Who already thinks like future me and where can I get in a room with her? The greatest gift that anyone can offer you is a thought. It's like a $500 vintage piece that never goes out of style. It is timeless. It is something that you will wear and restyle that will upgrade your look in an instant. You cannot put a price on the next level thoughts, right? Although for me, I have put some prices attached to it in my years. I've paid years of relationship building. I was just sharing on my, if you follow me over on Instagram, I was just sharing a story about how I have developed an incredible relationship with a community local to me in Long Island called Babes in Business Long Island. And how when I first went to the event, I saw the speakers up there and I was like, I want to do that. And I had like pitched the girl kind of green and she didn't know who I was. And she was like, okay, that's nice that you want to speak, but like didn't go anywhere for a while. But I had put in the work of showing up time and time and time again and built that relationship, right? And then also if you're putting it into money terms, I have paid 50K in to be in physical rooms for it. And they both have been the best investments of my life. This is like, instead of buying one outfit, it's like buying access to multiple other closets of the most fashionable people that you know. Like, how cool would it be if you're getting ready for a wedding, right? Like, I just had a wedding on Friday, and now I have this client who is a style coach, and she does something called the Good Energy Closet. You should check her out, Maggie. And she believes in sustainability and recycling really great pieces. So you can shop the Good Energy Closet. And I was like, oh my God, how cool. I just have access to this closet. I don't even need to bring it into my closet. I am paying for access to it. How great. And we can do this with our thoughts by getting in high level rooms. So it's just a better investment. This is thinking about long-term future you versus short-term future you. Short-term future you, you'll know if you're doing this. It's like how Julia Roberts bought that one stunning black cocktail dress in Pretty Woman and then thought like, what? I'm glam now. I could just wear this to every thing that we do, like breakfast. Cool. Just wear this cocktail dress. Like I'm a fancy bitch now. (laughs) But this is a Band-Aid. The rest of her closet was still hooker clothes. Okay. And if you are trying to get to the next level, we're not, we don't want to think short term. You can't just be like, oh, okay, I'm just going to think small and try and like just talk to this one person this one time or listen to this one podcast. I want you thinking bigger. You need an intimate, intensive immersion into high level rooms where other thought closets are upgrading you just by being near them. Okay. Step four is finding your new self-concept. So for me, when I decided I wanted to be someone who is fashionable, I've shared this on the podcast before, but I talked about the thought, I am a fashion icon. Now, this was just a bold, fun, ridiculous thought when it first came to me because I'm telling you, like my closet was not iconic. (laughs) It's not cute. But whether that thought is about you as a business owner, right? Like I am a CEO. Maybe that feels like you're playing dress up right now when you say that versus like, oh, like 
I'm not a CEO. I'm just a florist or no, I'm not a CEO. I'm just, a, you know, I just own a, a cookie shop. No, I am a CEO. That might be the next level self-concept. And what is future you self-concept that you need to believe in order to actually wear the new thoughts that you want to try on that we talked about in step one, right? And not feel like a hooker in a cocktail dress, right? You need that overarching new self-concept. And for me, it was I am a fashion icon. And with my business, it was I'm masterful with my time and my money. I'm a masterful CEO, right? And I've taken that. And when I say that, I know that I'm not going to show up in anything less than masterful. And I've really defined what that word means to me in a way that I don't use it against myself, right? If I like have a day or two where I don't schedule, no, I'm still a masterful CEO. I'm just, I haven't been practicing my scheduling, right? So we don't use our self-concept against ourselves. Still, we're human beings with the experience of 50-50. We're just using a a high level self-concept to help elevate us as we're learning, as we're growing. And then step five, never go back. Throw the rest of that shit out. The new you only wears clothes that match her self-concept. She only practices thoughts that align with future her. If she wouldn't wear sweatpants to the grocery store and she'd wear joggers and cute sneakers now, she also wouldn't say things like, I'm the queen of procrastination about herself. Are you catching my drift? Stop saying things that are aligned with the person you no longer want to be, okay? Upgrade your your thought closet, get in those rooms as you're trying to make this change, and then never go back. What is the designer version of that thought? If you're feeling stuck, if you if you keep catching yourself saying things like, oh, I'm the queen of procrastination, instead What is the designer version of that thought? What does she think about time and how you show up? Instead, it might be, ooh, I see that this task has gotten pushed all week. I'm going to make sure that it's on my calendar for tomorrow at 9 a.m. and nothing else gets done until then. Notice how we're talking about the same circumstance, about the fact that you've pushed the same task over and over again, but you're not using that circumstance to mean that you're the queen of procrastination. No, no, no. Future you, that thought closet does not include that low vibe thought, okay? What does she think about her time, her money, herself, her team, her clients, the world, and how you show up? You guys, there is one one-on-one coaching spot available. This is rare because I usually fill them before the coaching spots are up, right? Because I have a wait list and my coaching practice is about to change majorly in January. So whether I'm not sure whether my one-on-one is going to go away completely or double in price or have in the amount of time that you get, it's going to be it's going to be a big change. So if you've been biding your time and you've been wanting to know what it's like to work with a one-on-one coach or if you're really ready for this upgrade, now is the time. We work to get you thinking at the highest level, making advanced decisions quickly and making money without hustling to get it, but it's more than that. If you want not just a big business but a big life, babe, I'm your coach. Email me at jessica at what's happening.com. That's W-H-A-T-S-H-A-P-P-Y-N-I-N-G.com. Or you can click the link in the show notes or in my Instagram bio to set up a 20-minute consult call to see if we're a fit. And if we are, you're going to want to snag that spot. Do not delay because I, I can't even guarantee that the spot is available by the time you're listening to this. But hopefully if it's you and it's feeling aligned, it is. And if not, no worries. You will go on the wait list and then you will be notified for the next spot. But I am so excited to meet Sincerely Future You. Let's go. Curate your closet. Elevate your style. Impact every person that walks by you on the street before you even open your mouth. 
Does anyone else feel like shopping after this episode? Christmas is coming. Just shop digitally. Put it on a list. Tell your significant others. (laughs) The Masterful CEO School is that high level room for entrepreneurs fully stepping into being CEOs. If you are ready for this upgrade that we've been talking about this entire episode, make sure that you're on the wait list. Go to sincerelyfutureyou.com and just click wait list and get on there. We're going to be enrolling January 8th, but you also... This week, we just announced that you also have the opportunity to come to this round of Masterful CEO School Live, which is going to be on January 7th, and you can get your ticket right now. As we are listening, you will be able to go and buy your ticket for that event as well. All right, you guys, what an action-packed episode. Don't forget to connect with me on Insta. I love to just have the rapport, right? Like, cause right now I'm just in a room talking to myself. It's actually getting a little dark out and I'm like, I'm just, I'm by myself, but I'm not. I'm in your ear. We are friends. Let's connect. My handle is at Jess McKinley Wayno. That is at J-E-S-S McKinley, M-C-K-I-N-L-E-Y Wayno, U-Y-E-N-O. We'll see you next week. Bye.